What's up guys, today I'm looking at the new Omega LS kit from Jet Blaster. This is a fully metal internals kit for the Exus 2 or Nerf Longshot shell which will allow it to fire half length darts at high velocity. This is the final version of Omega LS, not a sample, and I pre-ordered this in the gold colour back in February. The pre-order price I paid was 130 USD, but now that the pre-orders have ended this kit will set you back 179 USD. In this video I'll talk you through assembling it and give you some tips as well as a chronograph test at the end. Before I get into that though, I want to give a shout out to Carl who painted this Exus 2 for me. Carl is a Melbourne nerfer who takes paint commissions. He has a YouTube channel and actually has a video which I'll link down below which shows him painting this very Exus. Check out the links below to see more. Now for the installation. First, the easiest step, installing the metal trigger. If you already have a trigger installed in your long shot or Exus 2 shell, simply pick it up, place the metal one down, and swap the springs over. A trigger return spring is also included with the Omega kit, but you could just use the one already existing in your blaster if you have one. Some quick benefits of a metal trigger over a plastic one. Under heavy spring loads, a stock plastic trigger will flex when you pull it. That's bad for consistency and predictability of when your blaster is actually going to fire the dart. In short, the metal trigger will improve your accuracy a little by giving you more reliable trigger pulls and a slight hair trigger. Now let's have a look at the barrel. This is a 270mm long barrel with a 13mm internal diameter. That makes it a little looser than the Alpha Kit version 1, while also being a little longer. The barrel was made looser to help cut down on jams. And I do remember getting quite a few myself with the Alpha Kit, where the dart would fold in half in the barrel and become very difficult to remove. This should hopefully solve that. Now when it comes to attaching the barrel to the dart gate, you can either take one of the small black pusher o-rings and put that on the barrel to help seal the thread, or you can do what I'm about to do and use a few wraps of thread tape, which you can pick up from a hardware store. This pink tape is thicker than the white stuff, and I end up only using four wraps of it. You don't want to use too much or it'll just get pushed off as you thread the barrel in. The Omega LS kit has a guide rod, which helps feed the dart into the breech. Unlike the Alpha kit, you can use forward-oriented half-length dart mags with no feeding issues due to the guide rod. For example, you'd be able to use Worker 15s or Worker Sniper mags, which have the darts oriented to the front. This guide rod is attached by using one of the included screws. Now I'll assemble the pusher side of the breech. Here's another thread, and again you could use the included black o-rings, but personally I'll be using Teflon tape and Teflon paste for this part, because there's no reason I ever want to undo this thread. Not that I wouldn't be able to undo it, but Teflon paste gets a bit messy, and you have to clean it out of there if you ever undid it. Omega has an o-ring for the inside of the plunger cup, which simply acts to absorb the impact of the plunger rod when you fire the blaster. I would never recommend dry firing your blaster, but this o-ring for padding should save you in the event that you accidentally do it. Now, Omega comes with two different o-ring choices for the plunger cup. You've got this orangey red one that I'm about to use, but there's also a clear one. The clear one's supposed to be more durable or something like that. I don't really think it makes a huge difference which one you use. On my production sample, I used the orangey red one because it didn't come with a clear one and that worked just fine for me. So I'm going to use the orangey red one, but maybe use the clear one on yours. That's up to you. For the pusher itself, you use one of the small black o-rings, same as the ones you use to help seal the barrel or the plunger cup threads. And as you'll see here, the guide rod for the dart slots through the pusher to give an improved reliability with feeding darts compared to the alpha kit. Attaching the pusher to the bolt sled, the Omega kit sled uses a threaded bolt, similar to Artifact or Roboman. I really don't like the Alpha kit version 1 where it had a loose pin where you use tape to hold the pin in. This threaded bolt is a much better design. Moving on to the plunger assembly. The plunger rod comes pre-assembled, but if you ever want to undo it or tighten it, Jet includes a tool for undoing the nut on the rear end. The o-ring for the plunger head is this loose fitting black one. If it seems excessively loose, that's actually how it's meant to be. Jet uses a speed seal in their kits, so the o-ring's supposed to be a little loose fitting. The included spring is called a 16 kilogram, and from my testing, it seems a little weaker than a turf 16. 
but it's still great they included a spring and that's what I'll be using today. The spring rest comes in two halves and they just simply slot together like so. This allows quicker and easier spring swaps without having to take apart the whole plunger rod. So now I'm going to apply a little bit of lubricant to all of the moving part o-rings. If you put o-rings on the barrel thread and breech thread you probably won't need lube there, but on the plunger rod, plunger cup and pusher you will. Jet includes some lubricant with the Omega kit in a little sachet. I have some different lube that I got from a local hardware store. This part is personal preference, but you want to use a generous amount inside the plunger tube. When you put these parts inside the plunger tube, make sure none of the o-rings come partially off. I found that putting the parts in at an angle and then straightening them helped ensure the o-rings stayed in place. Now let's place the final piece, the catch. In an exo shell, you want to put the catch spring on the centre post. In a long shot shell, you want to put the catch spring on the edge post. And now all the internals are in place. Let's get the shell back together and I'll see you at the chronograph. Now I really want to put a shot through this just to uh, christen it. I mean it hasn't fired a single dart yet. I haven't got any half rings on there, let's make one. So we'll just cut one now. Usually you'd use some kind of fixture and be a lot more exact. I just want to test it and make sure it works. Also, usually you'd use a magazine. You can see in there that um, you could just drop a dart in there. You can see that dart's in there now. So now we just close the breech. Let's fire it. Bloody hell, almost hit the window. Now, it turns out when I first cronied this straight from assembling, I was getting some pretty low numbers, 200 to 210 feet per second. I contacted Jet and they suggested firing more shots through it to give it time to wear in. And it seems they were right. After firing about 200 shots, now when I crony it, I'm getting between 220 and 235. Before I show you that though, I'll show you how good the seal is. I've simply got my hand over the end of the barrel and I'll pull the trigger. If there's no air leaks in the system, there should still be some air there when I move my hand away. There you have it guys, the seal has held for over 30 seconds. Time for cronying. These results give us a high of 234, a low but one off shot of 208, and an average of 225. If we treat the 208 as a potentially bad dart, that would bring the average up to 226, so there's not a huge difference there, and the range from lowest to highest would be 15. All in all, with the included spring and ACC darts, expect an average of at least 225. So would I recommend the Omega kit? Honestly, I think the upcoming Alpha version 2 kit is going to be enough for most people. Coming in at 65 USD compared to 179 of the Omega, the Alpha V2 is going to have the same barrel improvements to cut down on jams, and a lot of the damage prone parts have been strengthened. 
I'm hoping to get my hands on one to test in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. But if having fully metal parts, increased durability, improved feeding and forward oriented magazine compatibility are important to you, the Omega has all that. So this has been my video on the Omega kit. I'd just like to remind you that down below I've got a link to Carl's YouTube where you can watch him paint this Exus for me. Like, comment, subscribe and as always, thank you for watching.